We have here an intumescent lens that's developed over the last six months. We're going to use for the capsule rexus a fiber optic light uh, directed at the limbus. You can look down a little bit. Well, we're doing case three on your handout. And again, from the, uh, in the audience, please direct your questions when Dr. Gimbel's operating at whatever he's doing. And in between cases, you can ask anything unrelated to the case. Like Howard, it's going to be very easy to see your capsular rectus. Mm -hmm. We're on the edge of our seat. Well, it's very interesting how this uh, this gentleman told me that uh, I think it was October, November, and he was told that the cataract was about the same in both eyes and. Maybe he would uh, go 10 years, and this cataract blew up in, in that length of time. It's a little bit of pigment dusting on the endothelium. I'm not sure that shows up. Soft shell technique. Now we're going to turn the surface lights off, coaxial light off. And you can irrigate the cystotome, please. Just look straight ahead at the bright light. Can you see that, Michael? Right at the limbus, please. I think so. Mm -hmm. Can we have the coaxial light? Yes, move around. And uh, I don't use the the capsular axis forceps to uh, to puncture the capsule here because. The tear is somewhat unpredictable, so you have to visualize it, and here you can't visualize it. But here I would rather puncture with the cystotome, and carry it around to, I can't see what I'm doing, it's sort of by feel. No, where you're at is just perfect. So I hope I have a flap here now that I can grasp that is somewhat oriented vertically. And a coaxial light a dimmer now, or, or off. That's good, right at the limbus. Is it as bright as you can go, Corrine? That's good. I mentioned that Dr. Gimbel was the first one who really talked about high magnification advantages when you're doing a capsular rexus against a white background. Some of this is by feel, but you just have to trust. Now I can see the edge over here, and, and at that point, uh, now I have a little confidence that I can regrasp because I can see it. keep my grasp as close to the advancing point of tear as possible for better control. Does it show up at all, Bob? 
Can you see the tear right there or not? Yes, we can see it very well. I was close. Okay, let's see if we can come in furiously, uh, Kareem. There's a question, yes, sir. Um, I believe there's been a couple of papers uh, talking about dyeing the anterior capsule for greater visibility. I wonder if we have any experience with that. Uh, no, I don't personally. Okay, we have fair, fairly small capsulorexis. I'm not this going to hydro dissect or hydro delineate. I have just a little margin of concern about the rapidity of this cataract. There just might be some fragility of the capsule. Can you look down, little Michael? So with that small capsule rexus, I'm going to have less tip exposed. I think it's an excellent idea to err on the small capsule rexus size with these. The lens will tend, the rexus will tend to run less, and you can always enlarge it later. If need be. Look more straight ahead. Look, tip your chin up a little. That's good. Perfect. Did you just test the sound by buzzing outside the eye? I wanted to be sure to get any air bubbles out. Sometimes you get that burst of air bubble, and I didn't want that in this situation. For sure, and I think I'll take a spatula to start with here. This is right eye, and he has a fairly prominent nose, so it's not giving me a real comfortable position for the left hand, but I like to rest my hand. Room lights dimmer, please. Try to stay in the center here, very uh, deliberately in the center. Because of the small capsular axis, I don't dare pull back too far, or I might uh, damage the anterior capsule at 12 o'clock, but I'll just, I know that this isn't going to be a difficult lens to fracture. Even it's fracturing, just turning it. going to sculpt away here and try to reduce the... See, I'm quite deep there too. And that comment on the size of the tip you're using? This is the micro, isn't it? Uh, which is a 0.9. It's got that uh, curved tip that's the Kelman tip. I think you'll notice that his vacuums are much higher in this case than they were in the previous cases. I'm occluding more. Notice that I'm doing all this fracturing with the spatula. You can just anticipate that this lens is going to fracture very easily. You don't need a chopper in the eye here. If you just watch how the phaco tip moves very little from the center of the eye, may go out to in the uh, foot position two to attach, maybe a short burst, but any phaco for removal of tissue is done in central safe zone. You can turn the tip to the side to to uh, 
reach for material to the right or left. And if you're concerned about the tip pointing down, you can turn it to the side as the chamber shallows after much of the nucleus and epinucleus is gone. So you can have the safety of a straight tip as well as the advantages of the curved tip just by rotating it. Yeah, your chamber looks very stable. It, looks, it is. And that's the max vac tubing, which is allowing you to be at a much higher vacuum, yet keeping a very stable chamber. Correct. Notice my spatula under the tip. It just is a habit, whether the chamber is stable or not. Hundred centimeters. Thank you. Okay. Uh, look straight ahead, Michael. That's good. Let's try I min here, please, Henry. Now, for those who came in late, this is a steerable INA system, and you can regulate either the expiration rate or the vacuum. Actually, that's possible on, on even the standard tip. It's not the tip, but the instrument that does that. But this uh, is the steerable mechanics. Uh, let's go to IA max, please. IA max. Now it's about time to use the steerable feature of this IA because I have a small capsule rexus pressing on the left pedestal. And we get a gentle curve here to get at three and nine. some more. This is really nice for this small capsule rexus. Because without the steerable IA, to uh, do the second stage or enlargement of the capsular rexus while there was still cortex in the eye because you couldn't reach it safely or efficiently. Alternatively, one could use a bimanual with a small rexus or fill the eye with a viscoelastic and use a cannula, a reverse shaped cannula, but this makes it a slam dunk. Okay. Cap back, please. And again, for those who came in late, you can polish the capsule with this very smooth silicone tip. There's no imperfections or burrs. A little bit of cortical material here to the side. I think I'll just leave that and get it later. I A Max. Irrigation for switch. And when you have 
small situation like this, or a tear in the anterior capsule, or something that you have to manage, you have to sandwich the capsule with viscoelastic. Let's have the long, uh, Gills Welch. Yes, that will enlarge. Just a vanus, but water in the cornea. So we want to start I uh, don't think we got under it there. Can you see that little start to the capsule axis? Just a little nick. We have to make sure we don't close the scissors to the tip or it can be irregular. Michael, can you wake up and hold very steady for a moment? Same applies to the audience. This really is quite easy to direct. This, the capsule is flat, there's no tension. This is the hard part, it's maybe going to cut out here before I get around all the way. Sometimes hard to keep it going peripheral enough. Howard, why don't you do that once the implant is already in place when you can make it perfectly concentric and have pressure at your equator with your haptics? Yeah. Lisa. It could be done that way, Lisa, but, uh, and I think you can get a foldable lens through a very small capsule rexus like that as well, so good point. This is an MA-60, and that's why we're putting it in with a folder. MA-60 because he's younger with a larger pupil? Correct. Primarily younger. Uh, maybe more widely dilated and dim illumination. By a man. Can you look straight ahead, Michael? It's very difficult to enlarge that capsular rexus adjacent to the incision, even if you do it after the cat, after Lisa suggested the lens is in. So two alternative techniques. You can stabilize the capsule with your left hand using a hook, a dull hook like a collar button, while you penetrate the adjacent capsule with the 75 blade. Or you can use a reverse cutting scissors, which is available at Duckworth and Kent to make a, a, a oblique cut. One thing might have been uh a little easier to do it if I had enlarged the incision first. That's uh, would have given me a little more maneuverability with the Do you want to comment, Howard, about your experience with Acrosoft lenses? Well, certainly we have an extremely low YAG rate. I'll just have the bowel salt once more. And uh, I think that may have to do with the edge, but uh, we don't know for sure yet on that. Uh, so there is, uh, there are a few patients that that do notice some glare from the edge, but that usually goes away once you get the uh, capsule fibrosis. If you have your anterior capsule over the the optic of the implant, as I have here, uh, but that's why I prefer the MA60, uh, unless it's uh, a smaller pupil, smaller eye, smaller pupil situation. The operation went well. Michael?